He is the modest recipient of the recent Bofty Award for Lovey of the Year. He is John Sessions. <laughs> John, that looks like water. <laughs> yes, it is water. Oh, thing, yeah. right. <laughs> Could you define yes. lovey? What is a lovey? Well, I think... I think some people think that a lovey is some of the scarf and a big sort of um, fedora hat, which is more of an actor laddie. A lovey is someone who is an actor who takes it with remarkable seriousness. I mean, <laughs> those sort of people who would be talking to you now, and they'd be talking about a part they did, <laughs> and they'd say, I don't think you know, but to play the part of Othello is the equivalent to having seven car crashes and being shot in the temple. <laughs> and then they carry on talking like that. So you think, if they played Othello like that, what's, um, you know, what's going to work in the morning like? That's like uh, going to work in the mornings. <laughs> so you, when you're an actor, you don't go to work, you have a gift. <laughs> And inside you, there's, for example, when Phil played Buster, every time, every time he goes past a flower stall now, there's a little Buster in there, so I wanted to come out, isn't it? And it's important that he's still there, because he, you're holding him, and he's there for you to give us a gift at any time you like. Oh. If you want to be a tosser. Um, <laughs> like this character. John, that's, that's what you're not like. That's what they're like. I don't want to stop your flow, oh, but I mean, it is... Uh, oh, do, please. <laughs> because you won the prize as a lovely, oh, I so did, yeah. Were you hurt by that? No, I was very honoured. Yeah. Is, do you think then Phil now is becoming an actor, do you think he will be lo a lovey? Is there potential there for a lovey? No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I mean, I think, you know, hitting drums for four hours, I, I couldn't... I, I can't imagine. That's what a lovey would say. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I don't know how you do that. Well, I don't, um, I don't just hit them. No, I didn't mean to hit. I didn't mean to hit. He's a lovey already. It's no. great. Yes. You, you've done a cartoon as well. You didn't do bears tumbling down hills, did you? Uh, no, no. I did, I did a thing called Freddy Goes to Washington. Yeah, that one. And uh, yes, and I had to play a character called Scotty. And they, I did the voice and everything. And then they built the figure around my face. <laughs> Took them a long time. <laughs> So, uh, and what kind of creature is this? A, uh, he, was a, he was a person, but Ben Kingsley was the, so the main man who was a frog. They get posh people to do these voices, don't they? It's like The Simpsons, they mm, get they all do. the big stars. Now, uh, you've been working with young Robbie Coltrane, haven't you? Uh, what's yes. that? That's in Scotland. Yes, we just uh, recently come back from uh, Scotland, Iona and Mull and East Lothian, doing the life of well, Dr. Johnson and Boswell's tour of the Western Isles, written by and directed by the man who wrote Tutti Frutti, John Byrne. Mm. This is right. John's directorial debut, you know. So uh, Robbie and I sort of reenact the journey they took, you know, and uh, John has fun with history while still giving you history, but he wouldn't thank me for giving away some of the cooking secrets just yet, you know. Are you Boswell or the other I'm guys? Boswell, and Rob's Dr. Johnson, yeah. Do you have subtitles for us Southerners? Well, yeah, well, there's a character um, called Joseph, who's my servant. Uh, played by a chap called Leo Show Silver. And uh, Leo is black and he's got an incredibly strong Glosby. Glosby is like this. Very strong, you know. Well, I sort of like, you know. <laughs> and the uh, way we through it. Um, but John's also written it in very sort of. Uh, very Glosby. Now, uh, can you tell me you've got your tooth in your head there? I've got stuff like that. <laughs> oh, he's a booth and all that sort of stuff. I call it Dr. George. You see a big fat trapple there and nothing all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and because he came in for a bit of stick last time with Tutti Frutti, you know, because some people. Some, I mean, I'll just don't understand what he's saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, was, I'll, I'll, I'll let John Byrne in the back of the cab here, I don't know, and I knew Rob as well. And I'll tell you, I mean, I just couldn't understand the word of it, because he's not a King's English, is he? I mean, you hear what I'm saying, you hear what I say. <laughs> you <laughs> jocks, you sweaties, I mean, you know, mm. you, need, you need a phrase book, you know what I mean? You had a voice coach, didn't you, Phil, <clears> for this uh, film? Yeah. Fraud. What yeah, did they do for I you then? That, what yeah. was the plan? Well, I just, I, the plot. When I did Buster, I, I came off a tour, in a ten-month tour of Genesis, and I was talking like this, because we'd been playing football stadiums. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Joan Washington is a wonderful lady. Yeah, and, and, sort of yeah and uh, she said, shush, they've got microphones. <laughs> and I was talking very fast, and, you know, and, and, and I know I understand, but what, what do I say? And I, and I watched Buster 
not long ago, before I did frauds, and um, I couldn't understand what I was saying, and I did it. <laughs> you know, I, I obviously didn't slow down enough. You know, I mean, it's just things like that. We and we scraped the surface, and we went farther into it with frauds. But yeah, oh, you know, it make you very fast as well. Yeah. Yes. There's also other things that make you very fast. Is that salt or pepper or? Is there something else, Captain Kirk? <laughs> you know, but you know, you know, you can, you know, I'm jabbering now, I should slow down a Well, bit. who else do you think could do with this um, voice treatment in public life, would benefit from Oh, it? John Major could definitely do yeah. this um, <laughs> treatment, you know. <laughs> it would be marvellous if he came into the house and spoke like that. <laughs> you know, but just a bit of projection, because it all comes down the nose. I mean, he looks and sounds like something you stick a ticket into to get your car <laughs> Because it's all coming through the nose. <laughs> oh, yes. And you think, where did they make it? You know, it's like Ian Holm, you know, in Alien, you know. He's, he's like, John, you've got a bee on your head. Oh, no, and the head comes off. And why is it? <laughs> so he definitely needs to centre more down here, you know. Mm. More sort of um, rib movement, things like that. Yes. <laughs> now, your recent one man... It's like uh, quite a bit of rib movement already, I think. Yes. Your recent one-man show, the comic history of the, uh, the Royal Court, included, yeah. of course, John Osborne. Yeah. Uh, is the angry young man extinct now? Uh, no. I think in the, the 80s, late 80s, there was a period where, you know, Hitler was all right if he wore the right hair gel, when there was this deep prevalence of amorality everywhere, you know, and designer thought and designer sensibility went everywhere. And now that the country is run by these people, people are getting very angry, very, very angry. Last weekend, we were told about an old, admittedly innocuous lady getting a bit of fish in her throat. And actually, the same weekend, we were told, we were also told, that they were going to be charging people hotel rates in hospitals. So someone was holding a glove puppet up there while they were doing that down there. That makes quite a lot of people angry. Yeah, but these are real people. I'm talking about the angry young theatrical person. Was that... Um... Oh, well they, well, they were angry at the time. Well, I think John Osborne was angry, because I think John Osborne's always been angry. Yeah. You know, and he's just got angrier and angrier. What about the... I think he was hungry. Are you going to be, become hungry? Yeah. What, what about Look, music? Has the passion... Has the Hancock passion gone for music, Phil? Oh, huh? it, is it is Hancock. You see? Uh, yes, what was that? I missed some of that. But this is live, you see. We're back you have to in hunger. You see? We're, We're back, back in hunger. hunger. Oh, hunger. Oh. What about, yes, sorry about that. Has sorry. the passion, the crazy... Where were we? Out, you? Where were we? The, uh, the crazy days of, of music and passion. That's right, you've been listening, it's wonderful. <laughs> Has it gone now? Are the musicians less passionate about what they were up to? I don't think they're less passionate, no. I mean, they're, they're passionate. I think the, uh, the, you know, they're now, we are all, and I'm probably, I suppose, people would say I am one of them, but I mean, we all appear to be more establishment, which is actually not necessarily the case. But I mean, we've all met, you know, the royal family, for example, have sort of come over here, and, and musicians and people and, and the normal person, have sort of, we've all met in the middle, and so you get the thing with the royal family in the papers like it has been. Mm. And uh, I think the musicians, you know, I think there's just as many angry faces out this garage grunge rock and sort of that stuff from... Mm. from Northwest America. It's what about angry. the sheer madness and exuberance of the old days? You, you not, as an entertainer, feel the need to chuck a television set out of a hotel window anymore? Well, not too long ago, I was super-gluing televisions for long in hotels and unwrapping the soap. <laughs> Things like that. Really? How long ago would this be? Well, it's the late 70s, I suppose. Mm. Really? Yes. But, I mean, there is a thing in music that's annoying. Is I mean, there are good rappers, but there are so many people, that awful thing of someone waving sort of daily mail noises in your face, you know, and you just long for a Sam Cooke, you just long for an Otis Redding. Mm -hmm. Someone who gives you a song that just... Well, you've, you've covered a lot of other people's stuff, haven't you? Mm -hmm. You know, and they're just yeah, wonderful they songs. They're just classics that will be classics for 50, 60, 70 years. But that well, awful yammering... You've given us the right word, classic, because we're going to take mm -hmm. a break, and after that, we shall be in the presence of Lauren Bacall. <laughs> and the contract's drawn up accordingly. Mm. I'd, I'd heard this as what well, goes yes, on. Yes, I read that as well. Yeah. You yeah. haven't done any sex scenes yet, have you, Phil? Not yet. Oh. Are you looking forward to it? Well, I don't know. Um, Are you prepared to strip? I probably am. Oh. 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 Yeah. But, um, I'm I don't not think tonight. anybody's ready for it, to be honest. And my wife certainly isn't ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> she won't have it. There's a, there's a great oh, buzz about the new Lloyd Webber <laughs> musical now, isn't there? Like Sunset the Boulevard. Oh, yeah. Everyone's talking about that. And you've uh, had great experience with stage musicals. Do you think it's going to transfer this great film to the stage? 
I don't know how they're going to do I mean, I have no idea what the concept of it is. I, I presume it's the...